This lesson is for Wednesday, October 30th, and this lesson has to do with nuclear stability, and it is the first lesson in Unit 3, Nuclear Chemistry. So let's start off by briefly reviewing what nuclear stability means. So there's a certain kind of instability in uh, nuclei of different elements. If you remember from last, the last unit we learned about atoms, now we're going to talk about specifically their nucleus and how we can um, actually analyze the inside of an atom. Now, what we're talking about is, first in this slide is instability. So basically what happens is all the protons in the nucleus will actually repel each other. And generally the higher the atomic number is for any specific atom, the more protons you have. And because protons both have positive charges, they'll generally repel or go away from each other. And that's what makes it unstable is because there are too many protons. But neutrons are able to stabilize the nucleus because they are not protons. They are neutrons, meaning they have a neutral charge, so they're not the same. Um, generally, to find out if a nucleus is stable or not, we need to talk about the neutron-to-proton ratio. So basically, uh, there needs to be one neutron for every one proton, or it goes up to a ratio of 1.5 neutrons to one proton, for example, that would be like 1.5 to 1 as a ratio would be like uh, three neutrons to two protons. Now that we've gone over nuclear stability, now we need to talk about what happens when the nucleus is actually unstable. But before we do that, let's talk about charge and mass uh, for different types of particles that actually will come out. Because this is actually going to be useful um, when we learn more about how things are emitted. We'll learn about that in a minute. But before we do that, let's go to table O, where it says symbols used in nuclear chemistry. So just use this table that I gave you in the reference tables. And I just want to go over um, different parts of the notations with you. So there are three different particles. There is something called an alpha particle, a beta particle, and a gamma, and a gamma particle or gamma radiation. But what we need to notice is that there are two numbers. Normally, if you remember, we talked about this in the last unit as the mass number on top and the atomic number on the bottom. But now, since we're talking about nuclear chemistry, we have to think about it a little differently. So when we look at the number on the top, it's mass, it was mass number for the last unit, but now it's going to be just considered mass. And this bottom part is considered something called charge. So let's look at each one of these particles. The alpha particle has a mass of 4, and it has a charge of 2. And it actually has a charge of plus 2 because there's no minus in the front. So this means that it has a charge of positive 2 and a mass of 4. And um, it's noted as alpha. So this is actually the Greek letter alpha. And these are also known as helium nuclei because if you look at the mass number of helium, it's actually 4, and the um, atomic number is 2. Now, let's look at the beta particle. The beta particle is actually known as, as an electron, if you remember from the beginning of last unit, because the charge of an electron, remember, is always negative 1. And if you remember, compared to the um, proton and the neutron, it has no mass. So the mass is actually 0 amu. So E actually stands for electron. That's how you can remember that beta particle is also an electron. Or we can look at beta minus, because that's the Greek letter beta. And this minus just tells you it's an electron. So charge of negative 1, mass of 0 amu. Finally, we have gamma radiation, where there's no charge, if, as we see here, and no mass. It's actually only energy. And it's noted by this symbol gamma, which uh, is the Greek letter right here. So these are the three main particles we'll be using. Alpha is a helium nucleus. Uh, Beta is an electron, and gamma is actually energy. Now, uh, in terms of neutrons and protons, let's just refresh your memory that neutrons actually, um, let's remember, have no charge, so its charge is zero, and their mass is one amu. And N stands for neutron. For proton, we remember that the uh, charge is positive one. That's the opposite of negative one for the electron, but so we see here the proton is positive one, and its mass is also one amu. And that actually is the same thing as a hydrogen-1 nucleus. This is also noted by P for proton. Finally, positron is the opposite of a beta particle. It actually has no mass, so it has a mass of 0 amu and a charge of positive 1. 
but it's actually a positron because it's not negative. It is positive instead and no mass. That's different from a proton because a proton actually has a mass of 1 AMU, but a positron has a mass of 0 AMU. So we'll be using this in the next couple of slides. So now that we've gone over the different type of particles, now let's actually talk about what happens when a nucleus is unstable. So generally, unstable nuclei actually, because they're so unstable and because they have um, so many of these uh, protons, or, be, or gen generally just because they're so unstable, they'll actually break apart. Or in other words, there's, an, there's a uh, specific term for breaking apart. It's called spontaneously decaying. So what happens when they spontaneously decay is decaying nuclei actually will release something called radioactive emissions. So these radioactive emissions are, are considered uh, high-speed particles and they're considered energy. So the types of emissions we actually looked at in the last slide. So the types of emissions in order of increasing penetrating power are alpha, beta, and gamma. So let's just look at these one by one. Again, alpha, let's remember the top number is 4 and the bottom number is 2. So its mass is 4 and its charge is plus 2. And it's got a very low penetrating power. Next is beta, which has a mass of 0 AMU and a charge of negative 1. If you remember, the number down here is the charge. The mass up here is the mass. And that's moderate, so it's in the middle. Positron is the same thing. Um, mass of 0 AMU, charge of positive 1, and it's um, E. So that's also in the middle. Positron, remember, just has an opposite charge, but the same mass as a beta particle, or also known as an electron. So, so far we have alpha, then beta, in terms of um, penetrating power, and positron. Finally, we have gamma, which is actually, again, just in the form of energy, and it's got a mass of zero, and a charge of zero. So it has no mass, no charge, it's just energy. And because it's energy, it actually has the highest penetrating power, because it can penetrate through many different things. So in order, we can think of it this way. Um, let's ignore positron for a second, and let's put this in order. In alphabetical order, we consider alpha, beta, and gamma. That's how we can remember the order of increasing penetrating power. A, a comes before uh, B in the alphabet, and B comes before G in the alphabet. So alpha is the weakest, beta is stronger, and gamma is the strongest in terms of penetrating power. So um, we'll have to consider this when we're going through the next slides. But let's just consider the fact that alpha has the highest mass of 4 AMU compared to all of these four, uh, all these other three, sorry. And its mass uh, is higher than all the other three, and so is its charge. It's higher than all the other three. And we also have to compare penetrating power. So just use this chart when you're trying to compare mass, charge, or penetrating power. So now let's go to an example that asks us what we've just learned in the previous slides. So the first question asks us, which nuclear mission has the greatest mass and least penetrating power? The second question asks, which nuclear mission consists of energy only? And finally, the third question asks, rank the particles in order of increasing power. So if we actually review what we just learned in the past couple of slides, um, we'll figure this out. The alpha particle has the greatest mass of 4 AMU because all the others have masses of zero. The beta, gamma, and um, the positron all have masses of zero. But the alpha has the heaviest mass of 4 AMU. It also has the least penetrating power. Now the second question, which nuclear emission consists of energy only? We talk about gamma particles because it has no mass, no charge, so it's zero, zero, and it has the most power. Finally, rank the particles in order of increasing power. If you remember, we have to go in alphabetical order with alpha, beta, and gamma. So remember, alpha is the weakest, beta is middle, and gamma is the strongest. And positron is also stuck in the middle with beta. So this next example asks, what happens to the nucleus of uranium-238 if it is considered unstable? The second question asks, rank the nuclear emissions in order of increasing charge. And the third question asks, rank the nuclear emissions in order of increasing mass. So if we consider what we've been seeing in the past couple of slides, we'll see. Again, um, when, it's, when any nucleus is unstable, no matter what it is, remember, no matter what it is, no matter what the nucleus is, 
if it's unstable at all, it will actually break apart, or we have to remember this term, spontaneously decays. So the nucleus breaks apart or decays spontaneously, and it releases radioactive em emissions. Let's remember alpha, beta, positron, gamma. So now, in the second question, rank the nuclear emissions in order of increasing charge. Let's remember beta is an electron, so it's a charge of negative one. Gamma has no charge, so it's zero. Positron has the opposite of beta, so it's positive one. And alpha has the highest charge of positive two. So beta is electron, gamma is just energy, positron is the opposite of uh, beta, and alpha is the helium nucleus with that charge of plus two. Or we can think of that as two protons, in other words. Finally, the third question, rank the nuclear emissions in order of increasing mass. Let's just remember beta has um, a mass of zero, gamma has a mass of zero, and positron has a mass of zero. So all three of these are equal in terms of their mass rank because all three of them have a mass of zero AMU. Now alpha has the heaviest mass because it has that mass of four AMU because that's for helium. Let's remember helium has um, typically a mass number of four if it's found in the periodic table. Finally, this example problem asks, which nuclear emission has the least mass and the most penetrating power? The second question asks, list the nuclear emissions in order of increasing penetrating power. And finally, uh, the third question asks, what happens to an unstable nucleus of Fe53? So if we consider everything we've learned today, we'll notice um, the nuclear emission with the least mass is the gamma particle. So because uh, that's because it has a mass of zero AMU. It is the least mass um, that can be considered. And it has a charge of zero. And let's remember, if we're going in alphabetical order of alpha, beta, gamma, gamma has the greatest penetrating power. For the second question, we need to remember again alphabetical order alpha, beta, gamma. So alpha is weakest, gamma is strongest, beta and positron are in the middle. For the third question, what happens to an unstable nucleus of Fe53? Let's just remember an unstable nucleus of anything. It doesn't matter what the nucleus is. If it's unstable at all, it will decay spontaneously, meaning it'll break down or break apart using um, one of these four particles. So it'll break down, and one of these four particles will come out. So now what I'd like for you to try on your own for homework is this slide. Try these um, six problems and bring them in for class on Wednesday, October 23rd. Thank you very much.